I didn't check if I got enough space. You know what these MacBooks are like, don't you? They have like a really small hard drive now. Yeah, so this law of attraction thing is, it's just really powerful um, and interesting. So has anybody not read that? Okay, it's definitely a book I'd recommend. Um, Chimp Paradox first, um, and then definitely that 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 secret is like probably a next step I'd, I'd recommend as well. And that's why I wanted to kind of touch on it today. Okay, and also because I've just uh, the audio book is what I listen to, and the what they do is they have people all over the world. There's like there's like there's real like. Um, well-known people within the book talking about it like and they, they, they've like put it into a story it's a really good really good book to listen to um but yeah um so did anybody else do the passion test and find anything so jill you would have struggled because you didn't get download it emily did you you like your notes did you um and you in your notebook did you do it in your notebook or did you print it Okay. But you said that already, didn't you? You were struggling with actually goal setting, doing goal setting. Okay. That you, Doug? Hello. <laughs> wow, that's fluffy. It's a fluffy one. Okay. Okay. You do that too much, you mean? Okay. A real perspective of realization. Did anything that come out that was your that you could you could say was your passion or your new thing that you want to do? Your dogs jumped out. So is it something to do with dogs, pets, maybe? Hmm. Interesting. Or go and actually spend some time in, in places where there's animals, maybe. It might be interesting. Zoos and things like that. It's interesting what jumps out. Like, you you start writing things down and you're like, Jesus, I really love animals and I don't do anything other than, like, look after my own dog. And, like, maybe I could expand upon that. And you're just, it's just crazy what things jump out from writing things down on that on that passion test. Like, mine was one of my big ones was cleaning the house. I'm crap at it, so... You know, it makes me unhappy, so let's try and get rid of it. Things like that, it was, like, really interesting. Um, so, did anybody else do it that I haven't spoke to yet? Kath didn't do it. Jenny, you've done yours. Paula. Kath, you didn't do yours, did you? Not yet. Okay, we can expand on it next time. Now, I wanted to just ask, is there any questions um, from Empower by Eating nutrition perspective you wanted to go through? I know someone messaged me that and I was going to... Hmm. Okay. Okay, so first of all, have you have you started tracking? Okay. Yeah. Hmm.
So what's so what was your calorie set at? Okay. Okay. So then to be so how long did you track at 1200? Okay. So at this point, this point when we go, we be start be honest, starting to be honest with ourselves and go, okay. So how often did I track at twelve hundred, and how long did I do it for? And usually the answer would be probably a week or two, and then I'd, I'd, I'd end up falling off the bandwagon and going out at the weekend, or just not tracking for a little while, or it would be something that you would end up taking them calories super high. Um, would that be the case with you as well? Mm. So it's really the thing is, and for everybody that's gone through it already you know it's really difficult to keep them calories super low um it has to be it, it has to be a, a big mind shift to bring the calories back to a normal level and obviously we're taking you through the end of level one and we're like you know eat this many calories and that's why it's at the end of level one because you wouldn't have understood it until you got to that bit because i turn around and go eat this what, what, what was the level you said 2400 so two 2001 so you go to 2001 but the whole entire fitness industry is trying to make you eat 1200 or 1100 or you've got to eat under a thousand and it kind of messes with your head for me to turn around and go eat 2001 for your body weight it's like hang on a minute some people have ended up being 3000 calories and they're like what how can i eat that much that much food but then when you start putting a bottle of wine into there or a pizza you can see it's very quickly it comes up and it's not when you're tracking at 1200 is where the, the the damage is done it's when you're not tracking and the night out and the pizza and the wine happens and a lot of these a lot of the other guys on here have been through all that and it's nice for them to kind of i can see a lot of them smiling because it's like yeah done it been there you know now it's you know quite a while late for paula just laughed that was she's last year the uh, year or so maybe two a year and a half is it for you august oh, okay <clears throat> August few yeah. So then it's it's like the change in mindset can be quick. And if you're now if you're thinking now August is now April, you're like you know she's on a second fat loss phase and she's you know really enjoying it and she's been eating all them loads of extra calories all this time. It's like ah oh, big relief. But then imagine if you've got all that stress behind trying to diet and trying to um, eat twelve hundred calories and you know falling off the bandwagon and then hating yourself because you fall off the bandwagon and then the next day you're back on 1200 calories and then i'm trying to teach you to look at your passions you're like what it doesn't kind of work and that's why i wanted it to be like let's get the nutrition sorted first and then we can work through all this other interesting interesting stuff um so yeah you your question was should i continue doing it for three weeks or something like that Yeah. Okay, so how, how it's okay, it's all that bit is for is to stop you yeah. not being eating the twelve hundred calories. Once you bring it up to that level, so uh, time your mindset you or your you, you, your body's not like fighting to survive at the low level of calories, so you that bit can just run alongside it and any questions we can go as we go along. So then you're not your body's not in fear and your body's not in like survival mode while you're trying to learn yeah. this personal development stuff. That's all that was for. So you're on track, but it doesn't necessarily. And maybe revisit video nine or ten when we talked about oh, if right. it was it was three to four weeks. So <laughs> you would need two weeks of data to be able to judge on week three whether you were in maintenance or not. And then it might take six weeks, depending on the person, with you going up and down. So some people might end up bring, adding more food, adding more, adding more, because they're losing weight. And then you find out the sweet spot, and then you then know that's your maintenance. Then you can adjust from there, which would be taking away the next amount of calories. But there's no point starting to take away calories until you've balanced. And then you... Well, obviously, as I said... Yeah. Um, 
so you, everybody on this call, everybody on this call now lifts in the gym, right? Yeah, yeah. Everybody except for Jill. Okay. Yeah, Are you yeah, thinking yeah. about lifting at all, Jill? Of course, because I spoke to you before about the gym. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I did, yeah. From the gym. Yeah. I was in gym mode. Um, so, what I wanted to do is touch on what Paul has just said then, because everybody lives here. Now, if you go from find your maintenance, you mm -hmm. take away um, some calories, you start losing weight. But at the same time, you start lifting heavy. So this is going to be very relevant for, for Jill. So she comes to the gym, she starts lifting some relevant, relevant, oh, okay. um, you know, heavy weight. I'm yeah, not going to say heavy, yeah, heavy weights, yeah. but she starts lifting some weights. You start gaining some muscle. Muscle is oh, obviously okay. going to help you be stronger and, um, and you know, well, more strong for life and things like that, which is good. But muscle weighs heavier than fat. We've all heard yeah. it before, which... <laughs> Sounds bad because we want to take the scale weight away, but you're going to look better by having more muscle compared to fat. Because yeah, well, have you ever seen them pictures online where you've got like a pound, a, a kilogram of fat, and then a yeah, kilogram yeah. of muscle? Yeah. Well, yeah. So if you're, yeah. So if you're, if you've got a kilogram of fat, I think it's a kilogram or a pound of fat, maybe. If you've got a pound of fat, it's this much, but you've got a pound yeah. of muscles, this much because it's really condensed. Imagine the difference if you change a pound of fat to a change of muscle. Uh, change a pound of fat to a pound of muscle. You're going to be smaller and you're going to look more shapely or better because you're going to shrink, but you're going to stay the same weight if you changed it. Right? <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Great, uh, not great, but great exam analogy. Yeah. Great analogy. So you stopped lifting weights and you stayed the same. You've gone back to the same weight as you were, but you've lost the muscle in essence. Good news for you is we. we good news for you is we've got something called muscle memory, where once you've created them muscle cells, they when you stop lifting, they shrink to almost nothing. So you can't even like see them on a microscope. Or I'm just I'm just I'm just like messed about saying that here, but. They shrink to the point where you can't see them or whatever. And then um, when you then start lifting again, yeah, and then you, sorry, when you start, when you, when you lift in the first place, they expand and then they multiply. So you've got more muscle cells. So then when you stop lifting, they shrink. But then when you go back and lift again, you've still got all their muscle cells left from last time you were lifting. So in essence, they all grow. So you gain muscle quickly once, you, once you've stopped lifting. This is why people can come back from injuries quite quickly because the muscle cells are already there and all stuff like this is all a sciencey like mumbo jumbo behind it all. But the good news for you is you're gonna gain muscle quickly. Which means when you join our gym here, you're gonna start lifting. You might see the scales weight stay the same. Which is what happened to Paula, which is what will happen to you. You might see the scales weight stay the stats stay the same. It's very doubtful that will go up if you're in a deficit. But it might stay the same, but you might start changing shape. And this is where the video in level three, when you get to it, which is gain muscle, lose fat at the yeah, same time, bad, yeah. is when your measurements will change, but your scales weight might stay yeah. the same. So you might have a smaller waist, but stay the same weight on the scales. So yeah, that's that's quite um, quite an interesting topic to touch yeah. upon. Um, but yeah, so is there any question? Go on. Guess what you said, isn't it? Um, so you've literally just done that as I told you. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, our sponsors sold us to some more. So, what we're doing is putting everyone on the list. Um, yeah, just a, a few and she's pulling that like, feel good factor from um, exercise. Time. At a young age, which is great, so that she'll continue. Or, like, it's got a higher chance of continuing that because she's doing it because she wants to do it. Um, yeah, 
but there'll still be loads, especially in the open weekend, we'll have loads yeah. of boys in there. Yeah. Um, we'll have them. <laughs> well, that's what we're here oh, for, hopefully. That's nice. So, this next um, thing I wanted to touch upon is. Um, yeah, well, that's what is balance and it sounds really boring um being balanced and happiness is happiness coming from this balanced thing where we're not being too extreme and like too extreme with things that we try to find happiness from which in essence if we if we if we think like a roller coaster if we go up and find happiness from something we're going to fall down and we're going to end up being unhappy after the happiness thing right what what the hell am I talking about? Yeah. What we're talking about is this internal versus external well, that, happiness way yeah. of living. No so way, you've got you might have read this in some books. You might have heard people talking about it, but you've got two types of happiness. You've got your external happiness, right, yeah. which is what the entire world yeah. is well, then, fixated upon so to make us buy yeah, things, to make us. Like you know be stimulated by these things that we have to purchase or gain to make us happy which might be the uh, alcohol it might be drugs it might be sex it might be losing weight for example because we're talking about losing weight the external thing but you're doing it for somebody else it might be you know looking in the mirror and not seeing a change that's external because you're changing for somebody else not for you um, it might be money, which someone's touched, touched on before, that money doesn't make them happy, which is great, because money is very external, so we chase money, um, we chase partying, we might chase, um, I don't know, we might even chase gaining strength in the gym, but doing it because we want to beat the people that are, you perceive looking at you. We did touch on it um, last week. So you might perceive that, I'm going to squat or deadlift or bench something better than everybody else because I think everyone's looking at me. So that's becoming very external. So you can grab some happiness from that. But the problem with grabbing happiness from the outside is you're trying to do what um, Kath said before, is you're trying to control things that you can't control. Is you're trying to control somebody else's approval of you doing something in your life, which sounds really mad when you say it out loud. But so I want to be proving myself to other people all the time it doesn't quite work right or we turn off our mindset of not being happy by drinking alcohol or whatever to be externally uh, stimulated so then trying to flip like internal happiness on its head is going well what's internal happiness so the internal happiness is doing things that we want to do for ourselves but it sounds boring like that's the problem with it it's like what makes us happy and this stuff we were talking about in the passion test and what um well what most of you guys have started to touch on now is things internally that make us happy so it's 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 that thing has anybody got um done anything on that like have anybody heard about this internal external happiness thing like or have any experience in it Jill, what have you what have you come up with? What have you come up with, come across with it? Okay. Mm. Exactly.
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like when you start like talking about intrinsic and extrinsic, it comes a bit like, what does that mean? Where you just say like happy inside and then happy outside, it makes it so much more more simpler. But there's some books that overcomplicate it, I think. Um, It's um, this uh, uh, authentic self, something that really fascinates me. It's trying to be the exact person that you are, which is exactly what you just said, is be true to yourself, be the exact person that you are and, and own it. Like, And you're not trying to hide or approve anything to anybody else. You're just who you are. And it takes, as you said, you can see when you meet somebody, you're like, not you personally, but I mean, when you meet somebody, you might go, what, what is it that I don't like about that person? And something in your side, you'll be like, they like that and it's because probably because they've got a fake image on and they're trying to put this image on that they think they should have like they believe that they've got this image and i'm this this person and this image that i've got to uphold but inside where so outside they're fake happy and inside they're unhappy is usually what's happening but the idea is we just want to be proper happy, like real happy, like proper happy inside, not this fake happy that everyone goes around like buying things to try and make us happy. Um, Jill, you were going to say, not Jill, um, Jenny, you were going to say something. Okay. Okay, so this, so this, um, I want that, um, I want that slender body. <clears throat> Who's the slender body for is what you've got to kind of define yourself, uh, d define to yourself. So you define that it's, I don't want to be mad then, isn't it? Def uh, it's going really weird, isn't it? Are you getting me twice? Oh dear. Let's see if it's headphones. What about now? Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me okay? No? Speak. Speak. Can you, can you hear me? No, I can't hear you now. What, gone? I want nothing. I want nothing. Net that now. Net that now. <laughs> so, what about now? Can you hear me now? No? Shit. One sec. The universe didn't like The universe didn't like it. Like Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. I said, so that's what I wanted to say. The actual call is broke, <laughs> isn't it? I think we need to redo the call. Let's find out. I'm getting feedback on everyone. I am. I am. So what about now? Can't hear me at all. Okay, so it's died. Okay. So. Oh my god, thank you. Oh died on me, didn't it? Yeah.
Tell her she will get it um, back in after I've done it. To say I'll give it a refund at like half eight or something when I finish this. Hey, how do I get back to Facebook? Does it work now? Yeah, it's me, you know. <laughs> so I thought it was my headphones, but it wasn't, was it? It was um, the actual call. We're back. Better? Yeah, it's fixed now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It, was, it must have been a problem with the, with the call. It must have had a um, bit of a blip. Okay, um, so let's just rass, rattle through this last bit then, um, what I wanted to kind of touch on, oh it's got feedback again on it, oh dear, <laughs> Did that deafen you all? <laughs> Can you hear me now? Oh, it's doing it again. Let's try Facebook calling. So I'll call you on Facebook and see what happens. Why is it messed up like that? That might work. Will you cut it up for the dog for me, please? No, I can't because I'm too far away. Okay. <laughs> dog one, two, one, two. Who are we missing there? One, two, three, four. I am on, but I don't think you can see my little picture. Ah, uh, right. I can't see your picture. Okay. Disable your video. I wonder why that isn't. I wonder if it's because I've done it too small on the screen. This one's um, not seen. Jenny, isn't it? No, Jenny's there. Kath. Yep, there you are. Emily. Paula. Who's can't, who, whose picture can't we see? I'm okay. Now it's come off. Uh, I see. It's because I had a small screen. So if it's like that. There we go. Okay. And we're back. <laughs> that was weird, that was. It was like really loud as well, wasn't it? Um, so the idea is to try and find this way of living the highest quality life, right? That's kind of what we're trying to do of being happy as possible. So going through a, f a few things about this, oh, that's what it was. You talked about your trying to lose weight. Is it for internal or external? So ideally it's got to be for yourself, and that was what the point of the, the idea of being internally happy shows. So, for example, there's loads of studies showing us that, uh, psychology studies, so, so to speak, showed us that trying to change your image, I can hear one things going on in the background, trying to change your image is more likely to make you unhappy than not trying to change your image, which sounds counterintuitive, right? So then we go, studies also show us that trying to gain money to, even money just to survive is more likely to try and make us unhappy so then we've got money out of the question so we're not trying to change our image we're not trying to change get money 
Even worse is trying to get fame or chasing like Facebook likes and things like that. Even though at the time it makes us on unha- it makes us happy, it's not. It's it's shown by some studies to sh- to make us unhappy in the long run. So we don't want to be chasing that, which is external. Even things like shopping are, are shown to make us unhappy because we end up chasing the short term fix of the buying the new shoes or the new dress, which takes a drain on our happiness level. Which sounds counterintuitive because we've lived so long in a world what makes us think that then it goes tv and computer games and all the stuff i mentioned earlier on so obviously fitness is based around social media and we do a lot of this social media stuff so make other people think that make other make ourselves happy by making other people think that we're doing good becomes like a drain on our happiness level as well which isn't too good either so what am i trying to get at like I'm trying to get at the fact that these external stimulants, as good as they are, as nice as we think we like them, it doesn't make us as happy as we should be. So this idea of being balanced is to not try and chase these external stimuli too much. We're a stimuli-driven society at the minute, where we're trying to chase the new shoes or a new bag or a new thing. So if we do, if we then say, like. I put an analogy, a quick, a quick analogy on it to kind of end it is, or end, end, end the chat is to go. We've all had a bath, right? When you had a, you might have heard this on one of my videos before. So you had a bath, and when you were a kid, you had a bath, but you had an adult like looking after you, and then you might have been making waves in the bath, and of course the person looking after you would have been shouting at you for not making waves in the bath but then some water falls out of the bath because it's fun right to make waves in the bath when you're a kid but if you make the waves in the bath that little bit of water like splashes out over the side now what i'm trying to make the analogy is is when you're having fun in the bath and you're making the bath water rock that that little bit of water falling out the side is a bit of happiness jumping out the bath so of course the more rocking we do with the bath as a kid the more water will flow out the bath. And if you carried on doing it a lot and a lot and a lot, imagine if the <coughs> the adult left you on your own and you were like a kid, you'd end up with no water left in the bath, right? And this is the life that we're kind of living in in this society is the water jumping out the bath all the time is us trying to get external stimuli from things rather than being happy inside. So... <laughs> I'm sure you can relate to this somewhere in your life where you're trying to chase things as to make you happy and you end up like, the more you chase, the more you're not happy. And the more extreme we chase the things, the more water jumps out of the bath and it's it's not cool because we end up not being happy because there's no water left in the bath and you probably end up being freezing or bring it back into life. You end up being unhappy. <laughs> so um, the idea, which sounds boring, is to have the bath water there because when you're an adult you learn to not spill bath water you know when you slip in the bath sometimes you're like no 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 because the bath water is going to go over the edge you've all done that we've all done that so the idea is to not slip in the bath and create that big wave and all the bath water runs out because you're gonna you've got to clean it up because you're the adult now right so the idea is to enjoy the bath keep the bath water at a level which is not going to go over the edge and still rock the water a little bit which is being balanced in life it sounds a bit boring. It sounds like, okay, so I'm not going to spill all this bath water over the edge because I want to protect it, which is you trying to protect your life, your, your happiness in your life by not going too extreme and throwing all this water out the bath. You're just going to balance there, but it sounds boring. But you can then always be happy and always be warm in that bath because the bath water is going to stay there. So we then need to discover... This, this whole analogy is the idea is to be balanced, but then the idea is to discover what actually makes us happy rather than these external stimuli, and so you don't want to lose any bath water <laughs> outside of the bath. So then you start looking at what does make us happy, and you started to try and not confuse like body image, like the weight loss we talked about before, but the body image with making us feel stronger, making us feel better for ourselves for in the future. The why is in level one of Empower Eating, <clears throat> what you try to create yourself, um, trying to find proper, deep, happy, 
uh, drop a drop a deep love within your life so you're not chasing a short term relationship or a short term fix. You're trying to chase. You're trying to have a long a long standing relationship. Learning and education has been proven to show us to make us happier, which is something that's really interested me over the past five to eight years. Is all the learning I've done around business and nutrition and personal development just keeps me happy on a, on a daily basis just because I'm learning. Getting in the zone. If any of you guys like just zoned in on something and you really enjoy doing it, that's probably centered around your passion. It might be, and it might be something that you're good at. <clears throat> and you just zone in and like five hours can go by. It's trying to find the things in your life that do that all the time. Um, so then you're trying to find this um, internal, like, we, were, we spoke about it already in this in this call, the self-acceptance and the self-image. Accepting yourself as who you are and being happy about that and not being frustrated about what you think other people think. These are all the things that are going to keep us happy inside. Um, Paul, I touched on it before. Being kind. Um, being kind and doing helpful things with other people and giving to others. Again, it's another thing to keep us happy and keep these internal happiness going on and keep the bath water steady, so to speak. Um so for me, it's 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 about my whole entire business model is set up about helping people and making people feel better, and then the gym comes part of it as well, you know. Um, money needs to be completely irrelevant around all of this because if we're chasing money, you're more likely to be unhappy. As I said earlier on, gratitude's one of them. Um, we've all spoke about that already. So the more grateful we are, the more chance we've got of being happy. Um, being authentic or being yourself, you've got more chance of being happy. Um, contribution, meaning helping other people, like the Facebook page in Empower Healing, great example. There's no reason why you guys need to share what you're sharing, and there's no need reason why you need to comment on other people's posts and help them, but that's a tiny snippet of happiness that you can have by contributing on other, other people. Um, Paul has mm. Paul has dropped off by the looks of it. I've been kicked out. <laughs> um, not sure why, but anyway, that was pretty much the end of that bit. I wonder if I just oh she's back on again now. Um, they kicked me out. I think it must have been being naughty. Happy people. Um, yeah. So meditation we touched on that as well which i don't want to go into too much today but meditation i call it the self date where you just sit down and have two minutes five minutes ten minutes twenty minutes whatever you've got time for to do nothing and just sit there and just enjoy your own time and it's something that we'll we might touch on a bit later on it's not a big hippie thing it's just letting your brain reset you know um and then of course going back to the whole beginning of this is all of that kind of list what I've just reeled out, rattled out. I might like bullet point them in the group later on or something like that. That whole list is then center it around your passions. So then you just progress towards them and then your goal set around them. So um, earlier on, uh, I think it was Emily said she was struggling to set goals. So now we do all this stuff together and we're trying to define all of these things and we set goal around being yourself, being grateful, giving and being kind and contributing and uh, for Emily it might be around animals because that's what's jumped out on her passion test and we start putting all that together and all of a sudden we've got this progression towards your passions and that's the whole point of it. So what I suggest or what I would like you guys to look at doing this week is making a list on an A4 piece of paper Split it in the middle. One side you write things that make you happy that you have identified from chatting here as being external. And one side you write a list of things that make you happy which are internal things. And you might find it's quite difficult to do because you'll be like, uh, let's say just say for example shopping. You might be like, yeah, shopping makes me happy. But of course that's going to go on the external side and that's going to be a drain on our long-term happiness. So we've got to write it down. Shopping. Okay. Then... Paula said about she's now. Let me You're still here. You're still here. Paula said she found that she was helping people in her job. So she'd then write, actually, helping people makes me feel happy. So then you've got this dive, uh, this uh, 
split or this diversification between external and internal happiness um, parts of your life. And then later on, we'll do something with them. But it, first of all, it's going to make you realize that you've got different ways of being happy, internal and external. Because some, some people might never have ever sat down and like realized that this is happening in our life. Um, and when you start goal setting on that, things start becoming a lot more interesting or happy, so to speak. So that's me. Um, I know Jill says she's got to go. Um, anybody have any questions or any any input you wanted to put in? That's our homework. As your as your homework, yeah. <laughs> How did you get on with the Terminator analogy from week one? Do you remember where you you were, you were going around and you were um, notice. Yeah, Noticing when you were judging. Yeah, I've got other people doing it. Stop people doing it, and they, they whatever was doing it, like I'm, I'm judging me, and you know, just other people go, oh, so have I. I always judge, and they, it was passing it on. Yeah, it's keeping doing that all the time, and I'm trying to get rid of this mm -hmm. judging mentality. So that's that take that's a lot of this internal versus external happiness thing going on. But if you start off with that, we get to this bit, and we go. Ah, so I'm judging other people, which is then if the feedback is that they're Definitely judging me. Because if I think they're, if I'm judging them, I think they're judging me, but they're not. Because maybe one of them is, but it doesn't matter. You can't choose what's in their head, and that's the idea of this judging, switching this judging off, and it comes together with this bit. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and. We'll speak to you guys in a couple of weeks, but I'm going to probably bullet point that in the group at some point. And it'd be nice to hear some of your feedback and let us know how you got on during this week. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Take care. Bye. See you Bye. soon, Chris. Bye.